Hi friends, welcome. I'm Lisa Graustein, a member of Beacon Hill Meeting, and this is the third video in a three-part series looking at our minute challenging white supremacy. I am delighted to be joined today by my friend, Dr. Amanda Kemp, who's a member of Lancaster Meeting in Philadelphia Yearly Meeting. I say hi, Amanda. Hi, everybody. Um, Amanda does tremendous racial justice and healing work, um, and her webpage is listed here. I strongly encourage you to go visit her webpage, read her blogs, check out her work, attend her workshops if you're able, and more links to her work will be on the yearly meeting webpage with all the resources for these videos. So this video is the spiritual practice to accompany um, our minute on challenging white supremacy. And as with the ones where we looked at the doctrine of discovery, I want to offer spiritual practices as a way for us to integrate our heart, head, bodies, and spirits so that we're not just encountering the content of these minutes intellectually, but that we're really, we're feeling them, we're experiencing them, and we're um, bringing them into all of the parts of ourselves. For me, spiritual practices are also places where I can take the really hard things to God and ask for and receive God's help and guidance in how I hold and process and move forward with them. It's a way for us to draw on and deepen our faith and practice. And because the invitation is for everyone watching this video or listening to this podcast to try on the spiritual practice that Amanda is going to offer us, know that you're not doing this alone, that there are friends throughout New England who will be joining you in this practice. And finally, it's a way for us to connect with the divine ourselves and each other. So Amanda's going to share a practice that she outlines in one of her blog posts called 90 Seconds to Freedom. And she's actually going to walk us through. She'll first explain the practice to us and then guide us through it. So if you are um, someplace where you can sit and be quiet, it's a great time to try on the practice. And if not, you may want to pause this video or podcast until you can get to a quiet place so that you can really experience the practice as Amanda guides us. Awesome. Thank you, Lisa. So, um, hi everybody. Um, it's good to be here. And what I, this 90 seconds to freedom, I want you to know came out of my experience. I had heard from various places that if you could let yourself feel something for 90 seconds, then you could be free from it. Mm -hmm. Um, free from, you know, resisting it, free from, uh, carrying it. And, um, you know, just have more range of motion. So I was in a uh, hotel room in California and I had just seen something on Facebook. It was just another uh, short video of a black man being harmed by police officers. And I had delayed watching it, but I did watch it because the person who had suffered wanted people to watch it. And so I feel some responsibility to see things, even though I know they're gonna be hard. So I decided to watch it and, um, and to let myself feel it as opposed to watch it when I'm in the middle of a thousand other things, you know? And so, <clears throat> so what I encourage you to do is to, Experiment with this practice and see what works for you. So the first thing you want to do. Actually, I'll be honest with you. First thing I did was I set my timer because I'm like, you know what? <laughs> 90 seconds could be. Uh, I, I don't really know what 90 seconds is like when I'm feeling mm -hmm. something unpleasant. So I might find myself, you know, shirking away from it. And I'm a Virgo, so I got a little bit of the, you know, let me do it right in me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I said, so I'm going to set my timer now, and I'm going to invite us to feel this thing as you, to, to practice this thing as I walk mm -hmm. us through it. So in my case, I watched the video, and I felt, um, I felt sad. And so starting my timer... I just let myself feel sad. I let myself feel um, small. I let myself feel mad. So when you think about, or as you let yourself feel, 
I just invite you to just let the feeling rise and say yes to it. So, you know, grief, small, um, hurt. And with each feeling, as it rises for me, just saying yes. Just saying yes to grief, yes to sad, yes to mad. And that was 90 seconds. And as you let the feelings rise and you say yes to each one, you may find that, um, you know, that feeling subsides and you just, we're going to be present to what's the next one that rises. So you don't have to attach to a feeling mm -hmm. to have felt it. It might be fleeting. And um, in fact, when you feel something, it can flow, mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's the resistance to it that keeps it stuck. So after I, you know, I felt those feelings and I felt them more intensely in that hotel room, um, you know, there was more sobbing, you know, holding on to my gut, you know, all those feelings. Um, after I did that, I got myself some more, I, felt the need to, to give myself some comfort, mm -hmm. you know, so I got some water, which I, which I encourage you to do. <sighs> and then I decided to hold space for transformation. And that's something that Neon Uspan mm -hmm. uh, introduced me to years ago. And, um, and I just come back to as a way to be with without judging or fixing. Mm -hmm. And Nyonu says that holding space is just being unconditional love and unconditional mm -hmm. acceptance. So to get myself in that space of unconditional love and unconditional acceptance, I have a little process. I'll just share it with you briefly. The first step is I get my feet on the ground And as soon as I do that, oh, my attention goes to my breath. And so I notice my breath. And I just let myself breathe in and breathe out through my nose. And then what I'll do is do something to help me connect with my heart center. So the center of my chest. And so that might be breathing in. Just imagine I can breathe in through the soles of my feet all the way up to my heart center. And exhaling all the way back down through my legs and through the soles of my feet. Just taking a couple of breaths like that. And then I've still got my hand on my heart center, so I'll keep my hand there. And lately, I'll just say to myself, silently or quietly, I am unconditional love. I am unconditional acceptance. I am unconditional love. I am unconditional acceptance. And then with my hands still in my heart center, I'll just whisper some kind of gratitude or appreciation. And it might be to the spark of divine that's in me, 
to my ancestors. This is the completely human me for showing up on this very difficult planet in this very difficult time. I'll just say thank you. And then very gently, tenderly, you know, I'll transition out and open my eyes. You know, you know rub my hands, you know, touch my face. Get myself, you know, into this physical body. Thank you. I just want to share with you, um, I read your blog post when you wrote it, and I have used that practice that you just offered us and that you offer in your blog post several times. I've used it both when there has been something that I've been asked to see or witness, like you referenced the video that I know is hard for me to take in and hold. Um, and I've also used it when people have shared with me ways that I have perpetuated white supremacy or racism when I have done things to harm people and I go into that guilt and shame place that I know until I feel fully it's going to hold me back from being able to fully make amends for the harm I've done to be present with the way those patterns and systems show up in myself and to start to move differently and so both holding hard truths about the world but also holding the hard truths about myself it's been really powerful and that when I've really been able to feel fully that sense of failure or guilt or shame. Mm. Like I can get released from it in a way that allows me to actually move both in being present with other people and with myself and my own growth and change. And so I just want to thank you for offering mm. that practice because it's been a really, a really powerful one. Mm. Um, and it's, it's so simple, but it's so complex at the same time in, in um, what it invites us to do. And it has made me realize how much energy I put into resisting feeling things or denying things <laughs> about myself or the world. And that when I can hold them, um, the, the power of the fear of them becomes less in me. And then I'm able to engage with the reality of them more. So I just want to mm. thank you um, for your blog post, for joining me in this video today and for your ministry and work out in the world right now. Um, so gratitude to you, friend Amanda. Mm, thank you. Thank you. Peace, everybody. Peace, peace. Thank you. Be well, friends. I will. <laughs>